Hello and welcome to my podcast. Do me a favor, subscribe to the John Conn Report wherever you get your podcast. You're watching on YouTube, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. You can find us there as part of Empire Media, A-M-P-I-R-E. Always much appreciated when you tune in. And don't forget, you can read my work on ESPN.com. I'll have a story up Thursday going over the commander's choices at number two. Of course, we all know who they are. Jaden Daniels, Drake May, and... I'll throw J.J. McCarthy in there because who knows? Anyway, so this is all based on talking to a number of coaches, um, some on the record, some just anonymous, but just to get their thoughts on where the what they think of these quarterbacks and who they like. And there is one guy that these guys liked more than the others, and I kind of rank them in order. So that'll be out. That should be out Thursday on ESPN.com. Anyway, today I'm joined by former Washington Redskins coach Jay Gruden as we discuss, yes, the quarterbacks. Jay is doing some work for underdog fantasy, scouting, you know, doing some analysis stuff with Colt McCoy, of course, another former Washington quarterback. And so I want to bring Jay on because he studies this stuff. And I know he studies this stuff and he's always studied it. And he's really good at evaluating quarterbacks. Whatever you thought of the head coach, he's really good at evaluating quarterbacks. That has always been a strength of his and, and, and talent. So um, doesn't mean you hit every time, but he does put the work into it. So I want to bring him on to talk about all these quarterbacks, but also not just just what does he think about Jaden and Drake and 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 JJ, but also the process and just um, how do you develop a young quarterback? What do you need to do? To make sure you develop them in the right way. Um, he was he had experience with Andy Dalton in Cincinnati. Did a really good job stepping in as a rookie. How did he do? How did they help him do that? And then also, what questions get asked during a meeting in the interview process, and how important those those the visits to the facility are in terms of determining which quarterback you want to take things that you look for during those meetings. Just wanted to kind of shed a little bit more light on the process as well as the players that they're looking at. And I think we're all to be, I know we're all kind of getting to that point where we're kind of quarterbacked out. We're kind of, we're going to got another little about two weeks left in this process. So bear with us here. Um, I am going to be having some shows up soon talking about maybe some late round gems that can find because one thing's Adam one thing Adam Peters has done very well is finding those late round gems who are some guys that might tempt them in the later rounds that could hit that they could hit on I'll have some people coming on to talk about that and just other various aspects so um but because listen man let's not the quarterback is the biggest thing so that's that's what kind of drives this bus but I do want to try and get some other topics addressed and, and I'm hoping to have some other people on to talk about these guys or people to talk specifically about whether it's JJ or Drake may specifically about them still haven't been able to line it up yet, but there's been a lot of phone tag going on with those things. So, or, or text text tag, I guess. Anyway, so there you go. But today it's Jay Gruden. And so here's my conversation. Oh, by the way, I did ask for, from the club members, for some question submissions for Jay, just for about these quarterbacks, things they wanted to know. So I was able to get a few of them in there from Mike Stewart. Shout out, Mike. Um, he wanted to know about Daniel, Jaden Daniels' ability, ability to throw with anticipation as well as over the between the hashes. Kind of a big thing here. So I talked to Jay, I asked Jay about that. And then another person only have his handle, FFLG1418. Shout out to you. He wanted to know, or they wanted to know, um, who does who does Jaden Daniels and Drake May remind him of? And then kind of talking about ranking this class and and also comparing him to some of the groups like he wanted to know about last year. So um, anyway, shout out to you guys for your submissions and thank you for being club members as always. If you want to be a club member, go to the Empire Media YouTube page, click on join, find your membership level and go from there. So that's it for me. Let's get to my conversation with former Washington coach Jay Gruden. Well, Jay, first of all, it's good to see you again and good to talk to you. You're doing now some work with Colt on Underdog Fantasy. Tell people what you're doing there. Yeah, we're uh, just getting into it. We broke down some uh, quarterbacks and some of the top receivers in this year's draft. And then uh, we'll go over draft night. Once the draft happens, we'll go over some of the results of what happened in round one. And then when the season gets going, we'll start to break down all the teams and give some predictions for some games and some season totals and all that stuff. So it'll be fun. Colt's always been one of my favorites and Great guy to work with, and the people at Underdog have been very good. I think Colt, I, I remember talking to him when he was here that he would be a very, very good analyst or a really good head coach. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, he can do about anything, man. He owns the state of Texas. He's he's still the man. I always think I always thought he'd be like the governor of, of Texas, but uh, that's yeah. But he, he's doing great, and uh, he's got the young kids. He's doing great. He's a great father, and uh, this will be a great opportunity for him to get his name out there to maybe do some other things. And the other thing is, you guys use the actual. You guys use a lot of the coach film too on there, correct? Yeah, we will be able to use that coach film, which is important when you're trying to study and break down film. You got to have the tape. You got to be able to study the game. Correct. So let's talk about these quarterbacks because I know you've studied them and especially for Washington at the second pick, it seems like there are three guys that are on that list. Jaden Drake, and then possibly JJ McCarthy for you right now, how would you rank that group? It's a close call. You know, I think um, Jaden probably with the combination of his athleticism and his arm talent and his accuracy would probably be my number two pick. Uh, because if you have to play quarterback as a rookie, they have to be athletic and they have to run you out of some arm's way plays. Uh, the only issue with Jaden is his stature. You might be concerned about some of the hits he took. He got a concussion against Alabama, get knocked out of that game. Um, that's a concern I have with them. Uh, Drake May, I think, is a, a young 21-year-old kid who's got a long way to go um, from de developing his accuracy and his anticipation and things of that nature. I don't think he's quite ready to jump into the starting role right away though he'll probably be forced to, but he is a big athletic kid and uh, studies the game extremely well. And then JJ, is a, he's the wild card because he wasn't asked to do a whole lot. It wasn't his fault. They didn't throw the ball very much. He threw for just under 3,000 yards in both his years at Michigan, but he only lost one game. So he did what Jim Harbaugh asked him to do and, and produce at a very high level. So I think a lot, I wasn't able to go to his pro day and all that and, and see him in person and, and talk to him. A lot's going to be uh, how he did his pro day, how the ball came out of his hand, how he does in these individual meetings with people, how he retains information. And that's the case for all these guys. You know, if, if Jaden's the best athlete and, and throws the ball very well, but he doesn't retain information very good, he might drop and JJ might rise or Drake might rise. So unfortunately I haven't been in those meetings. Right. A lot of it has to be, uh, you know, based on the mental capacity of these guys um, like CJ Stroud, obviously he took some weird test and didn't do very well, but, his football knowledge is exceptional. You can see that when he plays for the Texans. So these guys, if they're asked to come in and play as a rookie and start, they got to be able to retain a lot of information. And uh, it's mentally, it's a it's a grind for these guys. And I think the one that can handle it the best, if it's close, that's the one you take. So obviously that's where those top 30 visits come into play. I'm sure yeah, a bit, in a right. big way. How important do you think? Because if you're, and again, you know, Washington has been very secret. Adam Peters, you know, Dan Quinn, very secretive about this, which they should be. But um, when you're having, like, where do you think you would be at with this? If you're trying to decide, when do you think you would have, would really want to know or need to know to settle on a guy? I mean, would you want to wait till after those in-home visits, I guess, so to speak? Oh, for sure. You got to, you got to get as much information as you can, make sure their health records all come out positive and, and they're good. Caleb has never taken a, a physical. So you never know if Caleb might be there too. If he drops, Chicago takes Jaden, who knows what's going to happen there. They trade out of the first pick. I don't know. Uh, but you got to be prepared. Um, you know, the good thing is, you know, that you're going to have one of the top two. So, so obviously you, you got your pick of the litter pretty much, but the home visits are very important. Bringing the people, bringing the quarterbacks into your room, you get them for a couple hours, two, three hours in your building. You're talking football, you're talking your terminology, how they can retain that information. And most of these guys, if they played significant amount of football, they'll be able to do it, but still, you can still uh, get a good gauge for their attention to detail um, how their passion is for the game of football, you know, what's important to them. Can't really gauge how much of a good leader they'll be, but you right. kind of get that feeling of how he interacts with other people, which is very important for a quarterback, you know? Yeah. So yeah, all those, all those things will weigh into the decision that the commanders have to make. How do you test gauge their ability to retain information? Like what little, how would you do things? I remember talking to you about this several years ago, but how would you go about that to see like, how does this kid retain information? I used to send them a playbook, you know, like, you know, a week or two before they came to our visit, not a whole playbook, but a condensed version of a playbook with some runs, uh, some, uh, you know, some formations, some plays, some past concepts, quick game bootlegs. And then I, you know, we'd quiz them on it and see what he knew, knew and understood. You know, I might put a mistake in there, see if he picked up on the mistake and, mm -hmm. and most of them do. And, and uh, they, they study it and they're pretty well, uh, they're all pretty well equipped to come in here. Some of them struggle a little bit, but for the most part, all the top guys are really well prepared and, and understand football and do a pretty good job.
Can you tell when you're watching these quarterbacks, like let's go with Jaden, first of all. So when you're watching him, can you tell like, you know, what are the things that you're looking for with him? We see the athleticism, but what are you looking for out of him? I think the most impressive thing in my mind about Jaden is how much he's gotten better from Arizona state to LSU. And I know he had better people at LSU, but I think his pocket awareness has just improved greatly. I think at, at Arizona state, he was looking to run every chance he could get. You can see him now as he progresses into his fifth year of playing college football, his ability to go through progressions and keep his feet still and calm. Uh, and then when he has to take off, obviously he can do that, but I, that's been, I think the big, uh, my my most impressive thing about Jaden coming out is his ability to stay in the pocket, keep his feet clean, and get to a second, third, and fourth progression and, and throw the ball accurately. Um, he does have some accuracy issues from time to time. He gets lazy with his feet. He throws off his back foot from time to time, but, you know, most quarterbacks do. Um, and he has to protect himself a lot better going on the next level. He can't do those reckless, uh, you know, <laughs> get hit face plays. Uh, and I'm sure he'll do that, and they'll talk about that. But that's why I like Jaden at two. So when you're two of the things that you would hear about Jaden during this process, well, just people wondering about, because LSU didn't have a lot of throws over the middle as often as maybe some other teams. They had great guys on the outside. They can get down the field, et cetera. Did you see the throws with anticipation from, from him? They didn't have that a lot uh, in their playbook as far as anticipating throws. A lot of maybe, uh, you know, on the outside, the guys in bump and run, they'd run a C or, you know, try to go stop. We call it a thunder route, you know, a fade stop, whatever you want to call it. A lot of those have to throw with anticipation. In fact, he threw one against Florida State. It was picked because he was expecting um, the receiver to stop and he fell down. It was picked almost a pick. I think it was a pick six. Yeah. So he can't throw with anticipation, obviously, but that'll take some time and some work. And, and, you know, I don't know if Cliff Kingsbury has a lot of anticipation throws anyway. He throws a lot of the, these weird routes as well. So, uh, but he has the ability, he has the accuracy, he has the touch on the deep ball stuff. So, you know, he has everything you need a quarterback to have as far as throwing within the pocket. And then he has the, uh, obviously the extra uh, intangible of getting out of the pocket and running. I guess along with that too, is the throws over the middle, because again, they didn't seem to have a lot of those with that. If you don't see a lot of that, would that concern you? Or do you say like, Hey, I saw these here. That's enough. No, it wouldn't concern me. You know, I think you get him at the pro day. I think he did some at the pro day, you know, and, and throwing over the middle is really a lot easier than throwing outside the numbers. You know, some some quarterbacks, it's just right. over the middle. Those are a hell of a lot easier um, than throwing outside the numbers and throwing those deep corner routes and those stomp routes on the outside and and those back shoulder fades. Um, so, no, he, we know he can do that. And obviously the throws across the middle, uh, sit down over the ball. Those are easy. Shallow crosses, those are easy. Basic crosses, I think he won't have any trouble. Then with Drake, and we, you know, we talk about the ceiling. When, when, first of all, like, well, let me back up a minute because you say, well, if you want a guy who can play right away, Jaden. But that would, some people might say, well, if you take the best guy, but do you think like Jaden's a guy that not only can play right away, but can develop at a higher level than some of the others? I think, like I said, his rate of improvement has been incredible, in my opinion. And uh, that's why I like Jaden right now. Now, Drake hasn't played as much football. He's right. got two years at North Carolina. So give him another three years at North Carolina, no telling what he'd look like. Uh, that's the issue that you have. You have more of a finished product with Jaden and the guy, I think, ready to start right now. And I do agree with you. Um, Drake has a chance to get a little bit better. He's bigger. He's stronger. Um, he's got a good arm. And I do worry about some of his accuracy issues. Um, they can be worked on and corrected from with time with his feet and his fundamentals and all that stuff. Uh, he's an er interesting guy. I know he loves football. He comes from a football university that did a lot of pro concepts, which is good. He didn't have a great offensive line or great receivers this year. That's why he took a step back. But um, and, and, and again, if you get Drake in a meeting room and you can see what kind of leader he is and how people get better around him, he might be the guy over Jaden. I just don't know these guys personally. Right. And when... When you're watching it, what do you say, I, as a coach, I can help fix that? I know, like, you can't fix everything. But yeah. what do you feel like you can fix when you're watching a film? Like, okay, this is something that's correctable. This is something I'm not sure about. Yeah. Well, first of all, he's only played two years at North Carolina. He's 21 years old. You know, he's going to go against guys like Russell Wilson, who's 38, Kirk Cousins, who's 38, Aaron Rodgers, is over 40. Uh, so these guys have been playing for a very long time. And, uh, you know, just from a fundamental standpoint, from a protection standpoint, he got hit a lot, free runners in his face a lot. So he's thrown off his back foot. You hope that with a clean pocket, he will have the necessary fundamentals to get the ball out and anticipate throws where he doesn't have to take a lot of hits. But the good thing is, like Josh Allen, he has the size and the strength. Um, and very similar to Josh coming out of Wyoming. I remember doing Josh. I was like, this guy misses a lot of throws. He's not very accurate. 
And some people say the same thing about Drake may, but Josh has made it work. And, and I think Drake can do the same thing with a lot of work and a lot of throws, a lot of fundamental, getting used to his receivers, all that stuff will make him better. It's funny. Cause like one of the things, and you know, you wonder how does accuracy travel from college and NFL? Is it a hard thing to correct going from one level to the other? It is. It is. You know, I, I, I that's, I, Personally, didn't really like Josh Allen that much coming out. That shows how much I know because I didn't think, you know, he could be that inaccurate. And I didn't I didn't realize he was 6'5", 260 and could run people over like he does. You know, I would have taken that into account. And we weren't really looking for a quarterback either at right. that time. Uh, yeah, I think there's there's a lot of things that can be corrected. But the size and, and the uh, ability to run and create plays with his legs and off-schedule plays is, is what Drake can do as well. And some teams will take that. And he's a guy – with the quarterback design runs that he can, he can run the powers with the pulling guards and all that stuff. I don't think Jaden, you want to put Jaden that he can do some zone reads and all that stuff, but not, not some of the direct runs that Jalen hurts and Josh Allen do Drake may can do those, which opens up your playbook even more. And he'll continue to get better with his accuracy with time. That's why, you know, he may be the second pick because he has, like you say, a higher ceiling possibly. And, and that, you know, that's why I say like, what other things would you look for to see like, okay, this is something you know, he's not there yet, but we see this and like you can get there because either, you know, something about his personality, what would you look for to make yeah, well, sure you that you can him make every there? throw? You know, when he was ACC player of the year and he had downs from uh, Colts, you know, he was pretty effective and he's pretty damn good. And you've seen him make all types of throws. You've seen him run, uh, keep plays alive. Uh, you've seen him miss some throws here and there. Um, but now I think the difference is just how he's progressed. Um, you see him at his pro day. How do you do it as pro day? Then you get with them and see how he is with other people. You talk to the coaches, you talk to players uh, who've played with them and all that stuff. And, and you just try to get a gauge, you know, that there's no really exact science in this, John, there really is. Right. No, just, well, that's a, I was going to ask you too, because it's such, it is the, what is, why, this might be a dumb question, but why is it such a hard position? Because is it, do teams miss because it's so important you got to reach for a guy sometimes or what what goes yeah, on well, with the that combination of things sometimes it's not the right fit sometimes the coaches don't do a good job of the young quarterback the young quarterbacks are forced to play and they're not quite ready this is a tough game i mean all the coverages and all the blitzes and all the runs you got to say formations and it is a very difficult game for these young guys to jump into they're in college they're looking over the sideline the coach is calling to the play they clap their hands and they catch it and they throw it you know what I mean? A, a lot of people can do that. Not a lot of people can go to the line of scrimmage and uh, recognize the defense and communicate it to the other people and then execute at a very high level. Uh, it's just very difficult. The speed of the game, the different coverages you see, the different blitzes you see, the reaction time has got to be that much quicker from college to pros, and some people can't handle it. And then they get on a team that's not very good. Most of these top draft picks, right. they're drafted number one because they're terrible. They're not very good. Uh, Chicago is an exception. They played very good at the end of the year and they got the number one pick from Arizona. I think it was. So I think Caleb will do fine there. I think that's a great situation there. And then Washington, they got offensive line issues, which they've addressed a little bit. Um, you know, so, so there's defensive issues. These guys are forced to play at a high level. And then you have some rookies that really come in and do well. And everybody's comparing them to Patrick Mahomes. So hey, this guy's like Patrick Mahomes. No, yeah. he's not going to be like Patrick Mahomes. All right. Just, Maybe eventually. And then CJ put an unfair yeah. uh, stealing on everybody last year doing what he did. But you see, you know, uh, what the kid from Alabama for Carolina did, he struggled quite a bit. So there's no exact science. You got to get the guy in the right system with some good people around him. And hopefully the guy is very mentally tough because he's going to go through some stretches where it's not going to be very good and people are going to get on him. Oh, he's a failure. He's he's a bust, blah, blah, blah. You know, Peyton Manning went one and 11, I think it was the rookie. And obviously, you know, that's what you kind of hope you you put these guys in the game. They're going to struggle a little bit, but they're going to gain uh, knowledge and, and confidence moving forward and, and just just continue to get better and better. And that's what the quarterback position is all about. As you know, like being a sports reporter, it's really easy to sit on this side and say they should do this or this is what teams should do. Now that you're over on this side, kind of analyzing the game, are there things that you would say, like, if I were going back and do it now, this is how I would gauge if a guy can go up to the line and read it and make those adjustments. Are there things that you do in those meetings or anything like that to gauge, can they do that? Well, a lot of guys can do it, um, but then executing when they do it is the whole different story. And that's something, you know, just for whatever reason, some guys don't handle pressure very well and, and, and don't execute when times are tough in critical situations. And that's what it's all about. And then some guys like Patrick comes in and stiff arms a defensive lineman, spins out of there, throws a sidearm, ball left-handed to Kelsey for a first down and they keep the drive alive and they win at the end. So you just, you just never know, you know, these guys are asked to do a whole lot. 
Some can do it. Some can't. And there's very few that are, you know, the top 10 quarterbacks in the NFL are making a hell of a lot of money for a reason because there's not many of them. Right. I always like when Andy Reid calls a left-handed pass by Mahomes. I always think it's a good job by Andy. So. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> Does Jaden remind you of anybody? Well, the way he looks on tape, I coach Josh Johnson. Now, obviously, that right. everybody's going to say Josh Johnson, but he he runs like him. He, he throws like him. He's a hell of a lot more accurate than Josh, but uh, that's what he looks like, the way the way he plays so upright. Um, you know, he's got a, his arm strength is, is kind of questionable to me. Sometimes I think his arm strength, he looks like Teddy Bridgewater. He could throw it far enough, uh, throwing the football, but running, he looks like Josh because of the speed that he had and all that stuff. But, you know, combination of uh, ability to run and throw the ball accurately and on the move is, is pretty important nowadays. And, and that's what they're going to get with Jaden. When you, you had Andy Dalton. The, his yep. rookie year how did why did he work so well i know like people are just he had a good career and he was good really he did. was good for you guys so what did you what was he able to do right away that helped him as a rookie and and what traits maybe did he have we won 30 games in three years with andy yeah and, uh, went to the playoffs three years in a row with them and won the division once so he did pretty good as a young kid what was important first of all it was the, it was a coat it was the uh strike year we didn't even have an off season that's right uh, so uh, we had to draft a guy that could really handle information. And Andy played four years at TCU. And he's very, very, very smart. Uh, that helps. We had a really good defense. So I wasn't trying to force the issue on every third down and 12. Hey, take a seven step drop and rip it, you know, 30 yards down a field. Sometimes we call a draw or a quick game and hope the guys uh, break a tackle and we'd punt. Um, but yeah, uh, and then he just continued to get better. We got better around him on offense. You know, we got AJ Green, we got Marvin Jones, we got Mo Sanu, we got Giovanni Bernard, we got Tyler Eifert. So we had some weapons around him where he didn't have, we could get the ball out quick and he can make great decisions. He's very accurate uh, with the short intermediate stuff, the long stuff. He missed a few here and there, but uh, accuracy, touch, anticipation, he had all that and uh, was able to move the ball when it counted and, and not make critical mistakes. If you could say like th this is you say Jaden's the guy you take now, who would be the guy you say five years from now this is the guy I'd want to have? Probably Drake, um, Drake May. He's twenty one years old, and, and JJ too. JJ, I just don't know because he hasn't been asked to do a whole lot of things. But I just think Drake May with his toughness, his physical style, um, it's kind of what you're looking for nowadays. He's more of the prototypical size, strength, athletic quarterback that you want nowadays. Um, and we just got to fix some of his accuracy issues, but he'll make up for it with his ability to run and, and break some tackles on third and eight and get you the first down. So if that's the case, why not just take him now? In yeah, other words, uh, definitely. They might, you know, I wouldn't be surprised. I just think, uh, you know, I think people will get enamored with Jane's athletic ability. Anybody who runs for over 200 yards, with those for 200 yards in the same game is pretty yeah. impressive. It's against I mean, four gators, right? Uh, yeah. So there's a lot of things that Jane has done. Uh, athletically and throwing the football within the pocket that I think just puts him, I think if you got to play right now and you got to win games right, right now, which most coaches do. Otherwise you get fired. Uh, you probably take the better player at this time. And that's Jaden. Do these guys, does Washington maybe have the ability because it's the first year of a new regime. Do they have maybe the ability to take someone that's like, who, you know, if they, if they believe that one guy has a higher ceiling in five years, is that a guy that, you know, because it's the first year, would they have more of a leeway to take a guy like that? Yeah, I think they do. And uh, yeah, as long as you see progress in practice and all that stuff, you don't have to play them. They got Marcus Mariota. They could play for a little while early, which is important for some of these guys. These guys are forced into action and and they're not ready. Um, Andy was ready because he got every rep in training camp. He got every first team rep. I didn't have any quarterback controversy. It was him and Bruce Gradkowski. Bruce get a rep at the end of practice and that was it. Andy got every single rep and that's what's going to happen with these guys. They got to, if they're expected to play as soon as they get in the building, they need to get every rep from day 1 and OTAs to training camp and it's got to be no controversy whatsoever. But, you know, if they're not quite ready if you can gauge it, then maybe Marcus Mariota gets some first team reps and see how he does, but um and then let these guys develop, but I, I, it's just very hard. I know coaches leash is very short nowadays. You know, right. if you go one in 15 or one in 16, whether it's your first year or second year, there's a good chance you're out of there. So I'm sure Dan still feels a sense of uh, got to win now. They have a pretty good team and this, you know, but they got to get the quarterback position, right? It's, it's, it's so hard. And now with JJ, what I've talked to some people who say, well, Michigan uses some NFL type concepts. So it gives them a good read on him. Then other people say, Michigan's offense was too simplistic, so you don't have the great read on them. What do you think? 
I agree with the second part. I don't think, uh, I think they're pretty simplistic, really. Um, didn't ask him to do a whole lot. He obviously could handle it. Um, when he was asked to spread it out a little bit, he, 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 he played pretty well. He had a couple bad interceptions against a lesser team. I think it was Toledo or somebody with central, somebody, yeah. you know, didn't really matter. They were blowing him out. So he probably took some unnecessary risks. Uh, but he's a guy that's very efficient. I compared him uh, on one of the shows to Alex Smith and the fact that doesn't make a lot of mistakes. He can get you out of trouble with his legs. Um, but people are going to be like, no, oh, he doesn't. He just throws a check down, blah, blah. And you, you get bored with it. You get bored with winning, John. Do you get bored with winning? <laughs> that's, right. that's all he does. That's all Alex did as well. So um, he's a guy that if you got some people around you that can, you know, a very good defense, he's not going to make mistakes. He's going to, you're going to punt sometimes. You're going to back people up, but he's going to get the ball and, and do the right thing with it and not screw it up. How, like, when you look at him compared to the other two, how long do you think it might take him to develop and what things would you want to work on with him? Well, you just got to see more from him, uh, see how he handles different concepts going to, you know, from, you know, if you're peer, peer progression or reading single high to high safety, how he can get off and how quickly he can do it with his feet going from here to, to check down over here and uh, manufacturing throwing lanes and all that stuff on third and eight and third and nine. They didn't have a lot of third and eights at Michigan. Hell, they were first right. down, second and three, first down, second and four, first down, second and three. They're just pounding people in submission. So we didn't have any of these critical situations in the red zone or third downs really to deal with. So um, that's just something you're going to have to see how he handles it. If, if he handles it great, you got yourself a guy. If he doesn't, well, on to the next guy. And it's funny because like he's a guy too that somebody was telling me in January that the more he's around teams, the more they're going to like him because just some of the stuff you're talking about on the board and just some of the leadership stuff. Yeah, so that's the same with that's the same with Drake May. I'm sure Jaden's the same way. Um, you know, most of these guys don't have the success. We're not talking about guys in the first five picks unless they have that intangible of right. uh, being leaders and handling information and and doing the right thing. Now, how they transfer it to the NFL will be the difference in some team success and some team's failure. How does this class compare? I don't know how much you studied like last year's class or whatever. how does this class compare to last or the last couple of years, maybe? Oh, it's probably, well, you hope it's better because, you know, I think the only guy on your team still is a, a, a kid from Jacksonville from a couple of years ago. Right. right? Um, yeah. So you just never know. You just never know. Jaden, his issue is, is, is he going to stay healthy? You know, is he going to stay healthy? And he does miss some throws from time to time. Is he going to handle the pressure the NFL gives him? Obviously, Caleb is the same thing. Caleb played small against Notre Dame. You know, if he can keep stand up right and get the ball out of his hands, he's got a chance to be special because of his ability to create plays. Drake obviously has a high ceiling, but is he going to get there? And how, who's he going to get there with? Does he have enough players around him that's going to make him better? A good, strong running game, some receivers that can do things after the catch. You know, and Michael Penix, we even talked about him. Right. He's like, look, he's got a great arm, great deep touch accuracy, which teams will fall in love with, but he doesn't get out of harm's way quite as much. But he did run a 4 5 40, which I was shocked by that. So he, he is athletic and he's got the two bad knees. And then, of course, JJ, you know, JJ's JJ. We, we you just, you just never know, John. I mean, if I was a betting guy, I would say Caleb will be the best out of the bunch. And then the second guy will be Drake May. And the third guy will probably be uh, Jaden from long for the long haul. Right, 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 right. And if, if Jaden's big thing is the staying healthy, if you knew like, okay, I know, first of all, how easy is it to teach guys? Cause to me, this is a mindset. Someone like, Oh, just teach them to slide. You've had quarterbacks who like to run. How, yeah. how hard is it to get him into the mindset of protect yourself? Is it's not he... so much when he's outside the pocket. He does, I mean, he has taken some hits outside the pocket. Uh, it's inside the pocket that you worry about. You're just getting his legs tangled up into a pretzel and all that stuff. His ability to, you know, hopefully he's very limber. And, you know, Kirk Cousins wasn't a very thickly right. built quarterback either, but he has managed to stay healthy other than Achilles this past year um, because his ability to, his flexibility that he has and his ability to get out of harm's way. So, you just never know. I, I don't know how to predict that injuries right. and all that stuff. I, obviously, you can uh, stay away from some of the inside quarterback design runs. You, other than the quarter, you got to have the quarterback draw because he's electric at that. Right. Uh, but some of the other ones, uh, you probably stay away from. Keep him outside where he can see people and get out of bounds or slide. One of the big things. This will be just two more, couple more things. But like pressure to sack ratio is a big thing for the analytics group. So, and that you know, I don't know how much you ever look at that stuff. Basically, it's like how many sacks are you taking versus how much pressure are you getting? You see that as being an issue. Jaden's number is higher when you watch a film. It does. I don't know that there's like a theme that stands out as to why. Like, what do you think about that? 
Yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's a good stat. I think it's worth looking at, and then you try to dive into it and look at the sacks. I always like to watch the sack reels of each quarterback and and then how they handle um, when they get hit hard, how they handle the next play. You know, are they rattled? Um, Jaden had some pretty good time this year at LSU. They did a pretty good job, but when they did get pressure, he did take uh, quite a few sacks. Caleb, Caleb took a ton of sacks, over 90 sacks and fumbled 30 times. So that's a concern for him too. Yeah. Um, and all these young guys, I mean, it, it, they're going to have people uh, – Free runners, they're going to have people coming off the edge. They're just going to have to deal with it, and you hope that um, they can respond and, and get out of trouble with their legs and throw it away when they have to. Who handled the pressure the best, do you think? As far as the quarterbacks right coming out? Yeah, yeah, the quarterbacks coming out. Who handled that the pressure in the pocket the best? And and what was there a theme with Jaden that led to some of those? Well, they threw the ball a lot. You know, they didn't have a very strong running game, and they, they gave up a – Shit ton of points, John. Yes. I mean, his defense was absolutely horrific. So he was forced to throw the ball a lot. You know, obviously JJ didn't have that much pressure to deal with because they were ahead a lot. You know, I think Michael Penix, they threw the ball a lot too. And I think he handles pressure pretty good within the pocket. Uh, he does a good job. Uh, uh, Drake is a big, strong guy that can see down the field. I feel very good about his ability, but his line was terrible too. Mm -hmm. I think they all handle it uh, at times very good. And like all quarterbacks, you know, it's, it's, it's a train wreck at time, a time or two. They, the biggest, the biggest thing is taking a sack is not the end of the world. You're going to give up a sack. Protecting the ball is what you got to do. And that's why Caleb has an issue. Yeah. Jaden has fumbled a few times and, and they just get reckless with the football because they think they can get away from everything. Last thing. So when you're, who are some quarterbacks and you look back on, you do all this evaluation, everybody does it. Who are some of the bigger ones where you've been surprised by one way or another? Uh, probably I mentioned Josh Allen, um, you know, uh, shoot, I don't know. Um, was there someone you thought would hit that just was like, Oh wow. They flamed out more than I thought they would or something. Yeah, I'm sure there is just off the top, top of my head. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Probably uh, a couple of them. We could talk about, there's been so many guys that, you know, a lot of first rounders have come through that have failed and some of them are still young. That's the whole thing. And, and people write these guys off after three or four years, there have been quarterbacks that have got better in their thirties. And, and, you know, Rich Gannon is a great example. He played at Minnesota, didn't do anything, went to the Raiders in his thirties and lit it up for four or five years. So uh, these guys need some time and uh, time to develop, but I hate to just trounce on guys. Ah, he failed. He was a bust. I thought he was going to be good or, Thought he was going to be bad. He was going to be good, but you know, it's a, it's a crap shoot and it's a very tough position to play and it takes a special individual to do it and both mentally and physically. And there's not many of them. And then I'm sorry, I apologize. The last thing. So when this team, this teams, they have like Tavita Pritchard as a quarterback's coach, David Blaw as an assistant, you know, they have guys who have experienced coaching quarterbacks. You had that too, with your staff too, you know, so is how important is that? Or do you need more like the mayor, the mentorship type, which one is more important or is it both, I guess? Yeah. You got to have a little bit of both. You don't want to over, you don't want to overcrowd the quarterback's brain with different people talking to. I tried to keep uh, the message clear and concise with our quarterbacks. It was my voice. If it was Sean McVay, he was an extension of my voice. Uh, but I don't want to have this guy coming in and telling him, Hey, this is how they did it in New England. This is, Hey, this guy coming in here. Hey, try this at the line. You know, no, I just want one clear voice and, Let's handle it and hopefully develops and I'll take ideas, but I want it to come from myself or, or the coordinator and uh, go from there. Jay, appreciate it, man. Thanks a lot. And everybody check it out on underdog fantasy. How often does that stuff come out? Uh, you know, I'm not sure. We just did a thing. It's uh, I think they have their own YouTube channel. I'm just getting yes. involved in it. So yeah. So there you go. There you go. Thanks Jay. All right, John. Thank you. That's it for this episode. Thanks to Jay for joining me and thank you as always for tuning in. I'll be back on Thursday with another episode. So I'll talk to you next time.